Brothers and sisters, this is indeed the fourth Sunday of Advent, the last Sunday before uh, Christmas itself. And, and this is the Sunday of peace. And so we're going to read the scriptures of Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. And if you've been following along, if you uh, watched uh, this past week's in-person service, which was sort of supplemental online, um, it was 13a, then you may remember that last week, this past Sunday, we looked at Mary's song, the Magnificat, and we talked about how there was joy there, and, and about how um, this world often teaches us to, or encourages us to pursue joy in and of itself, but the scriptures teach us to pursue God instead, and then joy comes our way. The kind of joy that Mary experiences regardless of her external circumstances, which some might have seen to be somewhat dire, considering her pregnancy out of wedlock. This morning, we are going to read the passage that actually comes just before, or fairly, uh, fairly close before, uh, Mary's song. And so this is a little while earlier than Mary's song in the scriptures. And, and so we read these words. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, for I am a virgin. The angel, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it, be accord, may it be to me according to your word. Then the angel left her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as I mentioned, this is before the passage that we read just the other day in which we heard Mary's song. Mary's song is well known, but so is this particular passage. This particular passage is one that we hear almost every Christmas time. And it is, it is significant, not only because it tells of the Annunciation of our, of our Lord coming to earth in Mary, but also because for our purposes here today, there is a significant transition in Mary's heart and mind between the beginning of her interaction with the angel and the end of her interaction with the angel. And this, this transition gets at some of the heart of what it means to find peace, true peace. Peace is, is not as the world would tell us, 
simply the, the reality of not being at war. Peace is not simply the reality of not being in conflict with another person or with, uh, with the family or with your neighbors or with the world as a whole or another country. That is not the whole and total of what peace means. Peace, like joy, is something that, biblically speaking, goes beyond, beyond the world's conception of the term. And so when we talk about peace this morning, we must look at this particular passage and find out how Mary comes to be at peace. Of course, the highlighting that it is the reality that we hear in, in, you know, just after the angel introduces himself to Mary, we hear Mary saying to herself, as it were, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this would be. She is not, at this particular moment, at peace. She is concerned and she is worried. But the angel says to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And then the angel proceeds to unpack a little bit of what that means, what, what God is going to do in her life. And it's interesting because the things that the angel unpacks for Mary are, are not really things that would necessarily in and of themselves make her feel at peace. Well, Mary, you are going to have a son. Oh, that's exciting. Not necessarily peaceful, but exciting. Uh, not only that, Mary, uh, but you are going to have a son uh, who is going to be the king of, uh, of everything, who is going to reign on the throne of David forever. Wow, that's really exciting. Not necessarily peaceful, but exciting for sure. Well, how is that going to be, angel? Because I am <laughs> I'm a virgin. I'm not married, I haven't had sex with anybody, how is this going to be? Well, Mary, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to come on you, and uh, the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and you will conceive. Uh, yeah, okay, wow, that's really exciting, but also very nerve-wracking, and it also could get me in a lot of trouble. Um, you know, from my neighbors who are not going to understand that I am pregnant by the Holy Spirit because that just doesn't happen in this world. Uh, but exciting and uh, nerve-wracking all at the same time. And, and yet, and yet, that could be Mary's reaction, all those things that I've just said, but yet, at the end of it, she says, in in a mind-boggling display of peace that passes understanding, she says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me according to your word. In peace and submission, she gives herself to God and says to the angel, Hey, okay, this is, this is what's going to happen to me, and that is fine. And that is good. So what happened here? What happened here to bring Mary peace? Well, it was not her external circumstances. It was not the reality that she was going to be pregnant outside of wedlock that brought her peace. We know that. And it's not the appearance of a heavenly being that brings peace peace in and of itself. We read throughout scriptures that heavenly beings are often uh, cause for alarm in, in the people who meet them, 
right? We, we, see, that, uh, we see that various prophets and so on, they, they either are totally alarmed or they are so alarmed that they, they bow down to worship and the angel has to say to them, no, 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 don't, don't worship me, I'm just an angel, right? Or, or, or we see the awe and dread of the experience and, and we see indeed that Mary is greatly troubled by the angel's appearance and announcement. <clears throat> so it's not the appearance of the angel. It's not the message that the angel brings. Those two things do not bring her peace. And it's not her external circumstances either, because that is not a peaceful thing on the surface either. What is it? that brings Mary peace. Well, there are two things that really bring Mary peace in this situation. Um, and they are both rooted in God. So Mary, the, the short answer to this question about where Mary's peace comes from in this moment is that her peace comes from God very much. Her peace comes from God in a number of different ways. First of all, it, it seems pretty clear that God's peace comes upon Mary in, a, uh, in the working of the Holy Spirit, in a, in a miraculous way, that God, through his angel and through his Holy Spirit, Spirit comes upon Mary and brings her peace in the, in the midst of these circumstances. Now, the scriptures do not say that explicitly. However, we do see, for example, later on, as we read yesterday in verse 46, we see Mary starting to praise the Lord for what God has done. And clearly, God has already, in some significant ways, been with Mary, God's Holy Spirit, so that she is not obsessed with her external circumstances, but she has peace. But not only does the Holy Spirit work in her heart, but also she has, um, she has faith. And this is incredibly important. She has faith. She has faith in the promises of God. When the angel comes and speaks with her, unlike Moses, whom when the burning bush, when God himself spoke in the burning bush to Moses, Moses had all kinds of questions and doubts. Unlike that, Mary only has one question, and it's a pretty simple one. And as soon as she hears the answer, she accepts it without any, any compunctions or worries or doubts anymore. I am the Lord's servant, she says in response to the answer to that one question. Mary has faith in God's promises. So when God says this is going to happen, she says, okay. And that faith is also provided by God in the working of his Holy Spirit, to it together with Mary's own heart, mind, and soul. Together. And then, Thirdly, not only does Mary have, uh, not only does Mary have the, the faith in the promise that God gives her, and not only does Mary receive the working of the Holy Spirit in her life very much, but also Mary has vision. Mary has vision. It is very clear from both this passage and from Mary's song that Mary's heart has always been, or for at least a, a, it is really a huge part of who she is, she has believed and had faith in the promises of God, not just for her, but for the whole nation of Israel and for the whole world. Beyond that, Mary has 
vision. She is not focused on her own circumstances exclusively as if she had blinders on to the rest of the world. And this is, a, this is a contrast to how we often look at the world in a number of different ways. First of all, we, we, we sometimes fight against the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We, we take our own worries and almost cherish them over and above the Holy Spirit who says to us, peace. Be still. Know that I am God. We cling to our worries. You've maybe had this, right? You, you, you start to worry about something, and, and maybe you don't bring it to God at all. Or, or maybe you do bring it to God, but then moments later you grab it back from God and say, I am worried about that anyways. I've had that for sure. With my kids, I'm worried about how they're going to be doing, or with work, or with friends, or whatever. I, I worry about what someone said, and I'm concerned, and, 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 and I say, okay, God, I'll leave it in your hands, oh God, and you take care of it. It is yours. Uh, you deal with this, and, and I will rest in you. And then 30 seconds later, it's back in my hands, and I am worrying about it. And so sometimes we fight against the peace that the Holy Spirit brings. But then also, sometimes we fight against the faith that we have and that we know. We let our pessimistic nature or our realistic nature take over. Well, how can we give this much to the church this year or to this charity? Or how can, we, how can we raise money to build a new school building? Or how can we do this or that or the other thing? It's just not practical. It's just not realistic. We just don't have the resources to do it. And we forget God's promises. Not that everything will work out perfectly and wonderfully in every particular instance, but that overall, in the end, all things will indeed work to the good of those who love him. And we forget, we forget our faith in God's promises for us. And then, too, we sometimes lack that vision that big picture vision, that God's desire is that none should perish, but that all should come to eternal life, that God is reconciling all things through Jesus Christ our Lord, and that we are part of that. We are not just all about ourselves and our own situation. We are, like Mary, caught up in a grand story that involves the whole human race, and all of creation. And we forget that vision sometimes. And all three of those things together, the work of the Holy Spirit, and faith in Jesus, in his promises to us, and, and the vision of what God is working towards in this world, all of those things together can bring us peace, just like they did for Mary. Does that mean that we will have uh, no conflict in this world? Does that mean that we will have no wars, that we will have no arguments with our neighbors or brothers or sisters or, or family members of other kinds? No, of course that's not what that means. It means a peace beyond that. And so here, we need to talk about then, what is that peace actually? Well, Mary gives us the hint when she says to the angel, I am the Lord's servant, may it be according to me, according to your word. 
And the truth be told, our Heidelberg Catechism shares with us the secret to that same kind of peace. Remember Heidelberg Catechism question and answer one. What is your only comfort in life and in death? That I am not my own, but belong body and soul to my precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a word that we use that, that sometimes has negative connotations. It's the word resignation. I'm resigned to whatever is going to come. As if, oh, well, it's going to be horrible, but what can he do? But this morning, there is, a, there is a resignation that we need to talk about that's actually a positive thing, where we willingly release our control or our desire to control to God, our Savior. And we say to God, I am your servant. May it be to me according to your word. And resigning or giving up in that way brings tremendous peace. And it does not bring helplessness but ironically and interesting, it brings more power to us. Remember how the scriptures talk about how in our weakness, God's strength is made complete? Well, that is true here as well. And so peace in this biblical sense is something where we resign our control, we relinquish our control to God, and he gives us peace. What does that peace seem like? What does it feel like? Well, of course, it varies from moment to moment, depending on many, many aspects. However, peace that passes understanding, peace like this is a kind of inner contentedness. Not that you are okay with the hurt and the brokenness of this world, but that you know that there is an end in sight and it is good. It is like an inner resignation, not that you have given over hope and resigned yourself to the badness, but rather that you have released your false attempts at controlling the situation and recognized who properly is in control. It's the kind of relief that happens when the the uh, first responder comes and takes over the CPR for you because you're not really an expert and you can give over to the, the first responder, the paramedic, the work that they are really skilled to do. Or, or the, the release that can happen when you get your spouse into the hospital in time so that the doctors and nurses can take care of her as she gives birth to the child. Or the, the kind of release that can happen in your job when finally you realize that this is not what you are supposed to be doing and steps are taken to be given that job, whatever it is that shouldn't really be yours, into the proper hands. That kind of relief, right? That kind of relief that says, oh, that's a burden off my chest. That is a load off my shoulders. That is a weight from off of me. It's that kind of that kind of resignation that we're talking about. That's the peace that passes understanding. 
And of course, there's more to that too. Peace and joy in the biblical sense are, are tied together as we recognize the beauty and the grace in this world, as we observe, just like Mary does, observe the promises of God working out in this world, then we see more and more the joy and the beauty, and that brings us an inner calmness and it's like sitting beside a babbling brook in the spring and hearing all of the nature sounds. And it is so vibrant and good. And you can almost hear the, the flowers and the trees growing. You can almost hear it. And you hear the little critters going through. And there is a peace as everything else goes away. This is the peace, brothers and sisters. This is the peace that God brings us. This is the peace that Mary experienced, and this is the peace that God is bringing about in this world through Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us live in that peace by living through the Holy Spirit in faith and vision. And let us share that with the world around us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for your love for us, that we may live in peace. Father, help us, O oh God, to spread that peace through faith, through the work of the Holy Spirit, and through vision to all of those around us, regardless of our circumstances. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.